Good evening all and welcome for tonight's collection of creepy cryptid stories. Don't forget for bonus content and extra stuff, check out my Patreon, link in the description. But for now it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. I live in very rural western Pennsylvania. One night after a party, I was driving my buddy Dan home through the middle of nowhere. I was stone sober and hadn't had a single drink. The road we were on to go to his house literally had grass growing down the center. I still remember the sentence I was saying when we saw it. I was talking about wanting to mail a box of bees to a dude I had beef over a girl with. Just a dumb, stupid driving conversation, but the moment made it stick with me. We were laughing at what I said, and this thing took a step and then leapt over the road in front of us. I will never forget it turning its head and look at my car as it bounded across the road. I wasn't even sure it had happened and didn't say anything until I noticed Dan had stopped laughing too. Did you see that? The best I can describe it was incredibly tall, seven or eight feet. It had to have been bean pulled skinny was dark grey and smooth and had no features, no eyes, mouth or anything. Just a body. Just a grey human-like figure. My headlights fully lit it up and there was nothing but a form to it. I remember it looking smooth but my headlights didn't shine off it. It was all over in a flash but I can still see it in my head. Dan refused to get out of the car when we got to his house. We just sort of sat there in disbelief describing what we saw. Had he not been there and seen it for himself, I would have assumed it was my mind playing tricks on me. It was just so jarring that it has never left my mind. I think about it often, and don't really believe in anything paranormal, but whatever I saw that night, something wasn't right. I am of Native American heritage from Akimisi Island, Canada which is part of the territory of Nunavut, and the tickle monster is still seen to this day. This particular incident happened to my teacher's aunt. She told me this story in the eighth grade and explained that her aunties, who were about six to eight years old at the time, were known troublemakers who wouldn't listen. Despite their mischievous nature, there was a blizzard storm and they wanted to play outside. However, their grandmother warned them to not go out on blizzard days. But despite the warning, my teacher's aunties thought themselves tough little ladies and decided they could venture into the bush during the blizzard whenever they pleased. Out of firewood, they planned to go gather some, but their older cousins intervened, instructing them to wait while she fetched firewood for them. As the older cousin ventured out, suddenly her screams echoed through the storm. She was screaming and crying, prompting her uncles to rush out with their firearms, firing in the direction of her cries. When the screams ceased, they went to find her, discovering her shaken up and sobbing quietly. Bringing her back into the tent, they inquired, What happened? What happened to you? Still shaken, she recounted seeing a creature with half a body, no eyes and wings. The creature seemed to consist of only bone without any meat or flesh. It was tickling her, explaining her screams and cries that seemed like a combination of laughter and distress. So the next time you venture out alone into a blizzard up north, beware of the tickle monster. I'm 20 years old, and I hail from a small village in the north of Iran, situated in a mountainous area surrounded by a large forest. This incident occurred two years ago when I was 18. It was a partially cloudy day, and I decided to take my usual daily walk in the forest. The main path of the forest runs behind our house, so it wasn't a long walk, but rather a journey deep into the forest. A dirt road with trees stretching as far as the eye could see. Despite it being later than my usual walks at around 5.30 or 6, 
With darkness descending, I wasn't concerned. My familiarity with the path reassured me, and I assumed I would return soon, which motivated me to continue. About twenty minutes into the walk, the darkness intensified with each passing minute. I reached a section of the path, a straight road spanning about a thousand feet, where the end was somewhat visible. As I walked slowly on that road, I spotted a dark figure at the far end, a dark entity standing in the middle. It was dusk, so I wasn't sure what I was looking at, especially from a distance. My first thought was that it was probably a cow. It's a village, so many people have farms around here, and sometimes they let their cows out in the woods for days, but usually in groups. So when I wondered why this one was alone, and more importantly, why it wasn't moving. Believe it or not, I don't know why, but I didn't stop. It might have been curiosity, or perhaps I didn't want to appear easily frightened in case it was a prank by someone from the village. I can't really pinpoint what I was thinking at that moment, I just remember looking at the thing without blinking. As I walked towards it, what creeped me out the most was the fact that this thing didn't move an inch. I became increasingly uneasy as I approached it and a shape began to emerge. It had a tall figure with long skinny legs. At one point I thought I saw a third leg or perhaps a stick in its hand, I can't say for sure. As I continued, my heart felt like it was about to leap out my mouth. I stopped sixty feet from it, observing it standing perfectly still without moving. I lacked the courage to say anything, and at that moment decided to forget it, and turned around and walked away. As I retraced my steps, I constantly glanced over my shoulder, paranoid about seeing the thing move. However, each time I looked back, it remained motionless, gradually getting further away until it was finally out of sight. It was nearly pitch dark at this point, and after a few turns I managed to calm down. I didn't worry as much, and resisted the urge to sprint home frantically, and continued walking at a normal pace, attempting to push aside thoughts of what had just happened. I started using my cell phone, considered calling a friend, and to talk to someone until I got home. But just before making the call, I looked back one last time. Something I wish I had never done. I saw something that still scares me to this day. There it was again. The dark, blurry figure, standing still in the middle of the road, about fifty feet away from me. This time I didn't stay to see if I would see it move. I ran for my life, and I ran as if stopping meant certain death. I didn't look back once. I just sprinted. When I arrived, my hands and feet were trembling, an experience I'd never had before and hoped to never have again. My family, upon hearing my account, insisted I must have been hallucinating, but I can sense the shock and fear in their eyes. I've never seen such a thing again, and never discussed it with anyone until today. Nevertheless, the experience will forever linger in my mind, haunting me. Just so you know, Deb is a creature known among the people of Mazadaran, which is a province in northern Iran who lives in the woods, runs very fast, is sometimes invisible, tall, and has a huge dark body. The narrations are different about how it actually looks. It is believed that someone goes out in the woods alone at night or dawn, and Deb will attack them. Once they wake up, they'll feel confused, crazy, or perhaps lose the ability to speak. In some stories, they were able to run away with a sharp weapon or even by praying. It's also believed that some got very rich after stealing its hat, which brought them lots of wealth and good fortune, and everyone in their family in the next generations were safe from any harm from this creature. But if it really was that, I'll never know. What do you all think? I grew up in southwest Saskatchewan and moved onto my auntie's farm in 2019 to live in the other house that is on their property. The house is fairly old, but I loved it. 
It wasn't long after I moved in, though, that I started to feel uneasy in the house alone. I would close every window when it got dark, as if it felt like something was watching me through them every night. Eventually, I decided to get a puppy to keep myself company. When my boyfriend at the time was at work or away from the house, it was especially nice to have a companion, but I always dreaded having to take her outside when it was dark. For a bit of scene setting, our house sat on the left side of a gravel road. At the back of the house, there was about 10 meters of backyard, and then there was a cow pasture and the cow barn. We didn't own cows, but in the summer another farmer would rent our pasture space, and so we would have them on the property. It wasn't uncommon at night to hear coyotes surround the farm either, and there were tons. Every so often when I'd go out with my puppy, we'd hear them all around us too close for comfort. We had a farm dog too, who would keep the coyotes away for the most part as she was huge, but every so often she'd wander elsewhere on the property to scout, and the coyotes would get a little too close for comfort. They always tried to lure my puppy out to them, but luckily, I kept her leashed. Now, one thing you should know about my pup is that she takes forever to find a spot to go potty. This is still a problem today some four years later, and back then it was the bane of my very existence. She would pace for at least five minutes, and that was only after finding a suitable spot, and sometimes would go out there for damn near half an hour just so that she would go. On this particular night, it was raining heavily. I was not happy to be out there, and she had decided that she wasn't going to go until she found her perfect spot. We had already been out there 15 minutes, and at this point she was also getting frustrated with the rain and wanted to go inside, but I wanted her to go before we went in, since we'd already been out there for so long. So, as any annoyed puppy mother would do, I started getting a little frustrated, and would repeat, Go potty, go! every time she'd get distracted from her objective. It was dark, I was cold and annoyed, and to make matters worse, the cows behind us were fussing fairly loudly. This was out of the ordinary for them. They were usually quiet and slept at this time of night. I was also hearing what sounded like a strange whistling, but shook it off as probably being an owl. I tried to keep it out of my mind as I pleaded with her to go. That's when I suddenly heard it. Go! Now one thing you should know about me is that I have a very strong fight or flight response typically, but this brought out the third response as I froze on the spot. I was mostly confused after what I'd heard. I tried telling myself I hadn't heard it and tried telling myself it was just a move from a cow that I must have heard wrong, but again, as if spoken directly behind me, I heard it. Go! It sounded unnatural. It was as if it was coming from someone who had never spoken a word before. A raspy, deep, monotone go. It almost sounded like it was coming out of an old radio. But of course, there were no radios out there. And every time it said it, it sounded in the exact same way as the first. And whatever it was has started repeating as if it had been taught its new favourite word. At this point, I spun around to the pasture to find nothing there. And then, the moment after I span around from behind me, I heard, Go! This all happened in the span of about three seconds. And at this point, I remember shouting out loud, All right, you don't have to tell me twice, as I picked up my furball and made a mad dash for the front door. I swiftly locked both doors behind me and sat bewildered in my kitchen. My puppy went back to puppying immediately, obviously unbothered by it all and happy that I wasn't making her stay out in the rain any longer. I picked up my phone and called my aunt, asking her if my uncle had been out in the field with the cows, and she said she hadn't, and I explained to her what just happened to me. She sent my uncle over to the pasture to check it out, but soon after told me he hadn't seen or heard a thing, and he said he'd check the pasture again in the morning. I spent the night hiding from windows with the lights and TV on loud enough to not hear anything from outside. The next morning, when my uncle checked on the pastures, he found two dead calves. 
It explained the colossal cow panic that had ensued the night before. I regret this, but I didn't push for any more information as I honestly just didn't want to know. But they told me that other than that they didn't find anything out of the ordinary. A few months later I moved off the farm. I couldn't be in that house alone anymore and my boyfriend and I had parted ways. A few months after that I started going to therapy for paranoia as a result of this experience. I started feeling that people were watching me, out to get me. Another few months after that, I moved out of the province for good and finally felt safe. I'm wondering if anyone here has any idea what the hell this would have been. There's no chance it would have been someone in our field as we're fairly far away from towns and neighbors and have cameras that would have seen anyone enter the property. Coyotes are common, but I don't think they're capable of mimicking words. Now, since moving, I've had some weird related things happen as well, but I'll save that for another time. For now, what do you think was shouting go? This is a story that was told to me by one of my firearms instructors called Chris. In northern Idaho, deep in the Rocky Mountains, there's a cabin that runs a cattle ranch. Chris's brother knows the owner and invited Chris to spend the weekend up there for some hunting and hiking. The brothers gathered their supplies and a few of their best pals took off to the mountains. As they were driving up the winding Idaho roads, his brother issued a cryptic warning. There are times the cattle escape into the woods and require being tracked down. The owner of the ranch has seen strange creatures in the forest. I'm not messing around. Everyone laughed and didn't take the warning seriously. Within the hour, they arrived at the cabin. And on the second day in the mountains, Chris decided to go on an afternoon hunt with one of his friends. They drove down a back road into the forest until the road ended a few miles from the cabin. They got out and walked to the nearby creek, then split off with one person going upstream and one going downstream. After walking for a ways, Chris came to a silty deposit where he noticed a foul odor and a broken pine tree that was green and healthy. The trunk was snapped in the direction of the water. There were four finger indentations on the tree bark line, like it had been squeezed and pulled out by a massive hand. Sap bubbled from the compressed bark, and on the ground he discovered numerous huge footprints with five toes stamped into the silt. He followed them and counted 73 beautiful tracks that led to another snapped green pine tree. The tree also had big finger marks on it, and was facing in the direction of the water. Tracks danced all around this tree. The smell was now overwhelming. Chris became so spooked that he immediately ran back to the truck. His friend had shot a deer, and they quickly drove back to the cabin with it. At the cabin, Chris explained the situation to everyone, and that night, Half a dozen men from the cabin armed themselves, each with a rifle and a pistol, and returned by truck to the end of the dirt road. They parked the truck facing the creek, and then walked on foot to the edge of the water. It was a moonless starry night, but the horrible smell lingered. The band of hunters waited and at one point howled into the night, calling for the creature. Chris thought he could hear something moving in the forest but the creek was too loud to be sure. He decided to walk alone upstream and into the woods to get a clearer sound. He could hear that there was definitely something big making its way through the pines. He ran back to the hunters and warned them that something was approaching. Moments later, from both up and down stream, they began to hear branches snapping and footsteps thudding. The sounds came from both directions, closing in on the group. The footsteps grew louder and louder, until the booming crunch of a log under the surface of the mud spooked them so much they all ran back to the truck. In less than two minutes they made it back to the vehicle. The moment they fired up the truck and turned on the headlights, they could see two massive bipedal hairy creatures moving up the creek 
in the location they had just retreated from. The creature's eyes shone from the headlights. All the men had clear shots, but all took flight back to the cabin in terror. The stench greeted them upon their return. They feared that with the slain deer outside, the creatures would be drawn to the property, and they all slept curled up with their guns that night, but no more signs of the creatures would be found. I told you, little brother, I wasn't messing around. He figured he ran into a family of them. There was a wild look in his eyes as he turned to me and said, I know they exist. It was around December 2004 near Burlington, Connecticut. My friend and I were driving around ghost hunting, aka checking out cemeteries and the Green Lady Cemetery at night because we were edgy goth kids, and it was a full moon so why not? We got turned around on some of those back roads and ended up in this weird woody area. It was winter with a little bit of snow on the ground, maybe a few inches. So we were driving down this really crappy paved road with lots of potholes in our old ass Honda going relatively slow. All of a sudden, a deer crosses the road in front of us. My friend who was driving brakes, and we were only going about 25 to 30 miles an hour. The deer, no joke, stared past our headlights and right at us. And this deer was huge. I don't know how the heck you measure a deer, but I know horses and would say he had to be about 15 hands at his withers. His antlers were pretty average, nothing too pointy or dramatic, but he almost glowed in our headlights. It might have been the moon at that point, but it was seriously creepy. He stared at us for a solid minute before my friend turned off the headlights, and the deer walked straight at our car which caused both of us to panic, turn the headlights on and actually drive around it, which was still approaching. We drive away, now going faster than 30, potholes and suspension be damned. I happen to look out the window, and the deer is pacing us in the woods alongside. It kept turning its head, looking at us. We accelerate. We must have been going at at least 40 at this point. We panic. But because of the road conditions, we can't go much faster without crashing or messing up the car. Finally, about a mile or so down the road, we come upon a brightly lit patch of road with a school and decent enough intersection that required a stoplight. I see the deer peel off behind our car and run back down the middle of the road. Anyone have any theories on what this could have been? A crazy deer? A cryptid? Or something else? The areas my grandparents lived in was somewhat known for Bigfoot sightings, and my grandfather had seen some signs of it, like a set of footprints in the snow that strode uninterrupted over a four-foot fence, calls from the forest, etc., as they lived at the edge of a state park in Ohio. Now I've seen plenty at this point, but back then I had never experienced anything with the paranormal, at least as far as I knew. Bigfoot fascinated me, because of all the cryptids it seemed the most plausible, and I'd spent some of my week there watching documentaries and discussing it with him. Now he wasn't much of a prankster, but it had happened enough that when something actually did happen, I always assumed it was him. On this particular night, I'd just gotten into bed at the end of their trailer. I was there for maybe 20 minutes in my insomnia, when I heard this call from outside the window, passing by quickly down the hill. Imagine an orangutan noise, not a loud one, just that idle huffing call they do at each other. Picture that down a ways and then having coming from the lungs that should belong to a moose or bear. As I said at first, I tried to rationalize it, that it was my grandpa messing with me. He almost had to do it. This thought lasted until I remembered that the way the trailer sits on the hill, the bottom of these big windows are sitting six feet off the ground, and the noise had definitely come from above my head, near the top of the window. So whatever made the noise was two or three feet higher, and the old guy didn't own any stilts. I'd wish I'd gone to look, but the realization that something that massive had decided to make a noise right next to me struck me with a paralyzing fear. 
I was playing around an abandoned area within sight of the trailer later that same week, jumping around rotten beams and poking through whatever was left when I just stopped. There was just a massive, imminent pressure behind me all of a sudden. No noise alerted me. I hadn't seen anything move, it was just pressure. The same pressure thinking back on it. Nothing inherently threatening in it, just the sheer weight of the gaze is what got me running. Since then I have experienced a number of strange things, but nothing has had the weight of that power and felt more real and present than I think people can be. If anyone else has had anything similar happen to them, I'd love to hear about it. There's the legend of the Michigan Dogman. I grew up in Dogman country. My uncle and his friends both experienced hunters and my uncle special ops for the military. His friend, a sheriff's deputy, came back up to the house blubbering like babies about a creature in the woods. My uncle's friend took off and over 30 years later still won't even look at anyone in my family's direction, let alone speak to us. Whatever they saw scared him badly. My uncle finally got it out to my granny and grandpa that they saw something resembling a Bigfoot that had the head of a dog or wolf. They unloaded both rifles and pistols on the things and hit multiple times and the creature just ran off. We have 5,000 acres of land, so it's hard to search every inch. But my grandpa saw the fear in his son's eyes and told my granny to stay in the house and to not let me or the dogs out. He grabbed a few ranch hands and told them to rifle up and saddle up. They were going out in groups to search every inch of the land for this thing. They came back well after dark, cold, tired and hungry. I was about five at the time and this is all I remember. They found tracks, but not the thing. My uncle spent the rest of his life tracking it. He actually died on the same property, in the area where he saw the thing in 2010. He never talked about his experience much, but when he did, you could see the fear on his face. This is a man that spent 23 years as a special forces officer for the military. He wasn't scared of much, but whatever that thing was terrified him. Many believe it's a skinwalker, some believe it's a kind of Bigfoot, others believe it's completely bunk, and some don't know what to think. I wouldn't be so quick to mark this story off, as I know whatever he saw scared the life out of him. This happened when I went to Colombia for vacation. I've always enjoyed South American countries, more than anything because my parents almost always went there to spend some short vacation time, so you could say that I followed in their footsteps. I had already rented a house where we'd stayed before, and it wasn't the best in the world, but I liked it quite well. I slept in a small room with the television pointed directly in front of my bed, just as it always should be, and behind the TV was a window that I always opened when it was very hot and closed it when I was going to sleep at around midnight. I remember one night I was watching YouTube videos and other nonsense on the internet, just killing time waiting for my food to be ready. However, I started hearing a sound that could only compare to the sound of a didgeridoo. I immediately was thrown off, put my cell phone down and took a quick look at my room. I thought for a moment that it was just a random person who for incomprehensible reasons was playing an instrument in the street, but it only took a moment to notice a face that was shamelessly peeking out of my window. It appeared to be partially melted, something that was noticeable more by the shape of his head than by his skin. The latter was a muddy colour that seemed to be worn and almost in a state of decay, with no nose and eyes that were just circular and black. The mouth seemed to have a small smile on the right side, but on the left side appeared to be broken, but perhaps unintentionally showing an extension of the mouth on that side, forming a smile up to his cheek. His mouth had nothing inside either, 
just a vacant mall. The sound of didgeridoo that it produced only increased all the tension and fear I had at that moment, but I stopped trying to understand what the thing was and thought about my safety. I ran as quickly as possible to the kitchen and took a knife out and I returned. It stared at me. I was very scared, but it did not prevent me from at least preparing for any attempted intrusion into my house by that creature. His face remained static, although the sound did not stop. After maybe four or five minutes of looking at it and sweating, the creature finally moved its face, and turning to the right, it left, and the sound it made vanished. I ran towards my door and saw its shadow under it. At that moment, the lights outside the house were already on. I was almost paralyzed by the entire encounter. I've always believed in sightings of the impossible, but seeing or reading about them on the internet is very different from experiencing it. I knew that what I saw wasn't normal. The window, with all the fear running through my body, was closed by me minutes later. I couldn't sleep after that, nor could I concentrate. I was just thinking trying to rationalize, and if he really was just a tramp who wanted to spy on me. That theory, although disturbing, was the one I preferred. But it wasn't possible, since the place behind the window has no way for someone to lean in to look on the inside, because it was two meters off the ground. In that part, there was a crack on the ground that was left by an unfinished construction, although clearly the crack didn't reach my house so there was no way a normal person could have reached the window. This is the first time I've shared it, and I'm interested if anyone else could help me figure out what the hell happened. This event took place during the years I was still in high school. I was 18, a junior, just about ready to drop out a month before I dropped out and moved to New York City. And this took place in 2011. So five other friends of mine and myself were getting ready for a weekend of drinking and hanging out. This was the month of February in Arizona, so it was not really warm yet, and this took place near Castle Hot Springs, out between Morristown and Wickenburg. As we drove around the old dirt roads looking for a place to set up camp and blasting music out, we found a spot and started setting up. Before you know it, tents were up, a fire was going, and beers were cracked. The sun began to go down, and once the sun was no longer out, but brightness was still in the skies, a strange feeling blanketed over all of us. I'd like to say it started as if we were listening to the radio. These ads kept playing, well, that's normal, right? Yeah, not ten minutes straight every single station, but the ads were things of places we'd never heard of. These places did not exist. Now, our intention, no lie, was to get sloshed. That was only off beers and nothing else. I got up to go take a whiz mimicking commercial that I was hearing at the time when I heard what sounded like a laugh. We were the only people there. We were also on a hill, so we overlooked our area. I ran back to the fire because I started to get a gut feeling to run. My closest friend asked what was the matter and commented that it looked like I'd seen a ghost. Then the radio started acting up, and laughing in a circle around us and our campsite. Now the two girls began freaking out, because the laughter was a sinister one, increasing in volume and proximity. We began started cracking open the hard liquor. We were all very nervous, and all of us were hearing the same thing, so we tried to get a grip on things. Ant whipped out his phone, it was dead. John did the same thing, as did I. All the phones somehow had lost all charge. Strangely, we rushed over to the truck, since clouds were forming above us in case it started to rain. We could wait in the car, and the truck wouldn't start either. I knew the clouds were approaching because I was the first to smell the rain. Some lights flashed. I wouldn't quite call it thunder or lightning, because it was quite like the earth was taking pictures. It was dark out. Everywhere lit up like a camera flash. That's when I saw a seven foot tall being that literally blended in with dead trees, rocks and bushes. It was very tall and thin. 
The fear was sensed hours before I saw the creature. All the electronics, of course, were malfunctioning, and it appeared to have no face. Nothing. You could just barely make out the tall, skinny-built, very thin human-like body. It could not go through things and had to go around them. I feel like it wanted me to see it. The fear it gave off was intense and it moved lightning fast. It was only at night this thing came out. If it could come out during the day, we probably would have seen it sooner, unless it was watching us all along. I wish I knew what it wanted. It was just like running around scaring people. Oh, and as I was taking a piss, it tried luring me down by the wash, mimicking my friend's voice. When it mimicked mine on a different piss break is when I bolted back and said screw that and stayed by the truck. I don't know what happened to this day. We all somehow blacked out. The crazy part was that I blacked out in the bed of the truck. When I woke, I was so grateful to be alive and hung over, and the ringing in my ears went away. I checked my pocket to reach for my phone, which was somehow charged again. The amount of fear this thing instilled of us combined with the scenery was insane. If anyone has ever seen something like this, I'd love to hear about it. This happened to myself, my little brother and a cousin when I was 14 at dusk. We wanted to go play basketball at the outside courts. It was still daylight when we first got out there and we usually started heading home around dusk or when the court lights came on, as it was only a few blocks from our grandma's house. When the lights come on, usually the bigger kids get to the court to play, but this time we were fortunate enough to have the whole court to ourselves. We were just shooting hoops like normal, nothing out of the ordinary, and the lights came on, but we were having fun anyway. The game was 21, so two of us would stand to the side of the hoop depending on which direction the ball would go so it wouldn't roll into the street. And on one of these shots that my cousin made, the ball just missed the hoop and bounced behind it. I managed to grab it before leaving the court when I saw a strange creature. It was like a little person no bigger than two feet, with the face of an old man and a large nose and ragged clothes that looked like they were handmade. It was crouched down almost like in a hiding position. And when I got too close, that's when it stood up, looked at me, and ran away. Believe me, my first thought was not to chase after it. I was scared stiff, and my cousin and little brother saw it too and ran. When it ran, it was heading for the other side of the court. I couldn't believe the speed of this thing, despite it being so small. It made it to the other side in mere seconds in the blink of an eye. I snapped out of it and started to run home, and as I ran past that same post, the thing ran behind, and I turned to look to see if it was still there, but it was gone. When I got home, my little brother and cousin had already told the adults what happened, and they told us that these creatures are called duendes. Apparently there are different types of them too, and that's my experience. There is a trail and park, a wooded area right behind my house. Very near to it, there's also a playground and basketball court. And it's a neighborhood park that often has a lot of people around it, even at night. I often walk from my backyard to the playground with my siblings, or whenever I feel like fishing at the little swampy lake area. It was just before 9 p.m. and I was walking from my backyard with my little sister and my boyfriend to the playground. It was getting dark, and my boyfriend was still playing basketball with my cousins who drove to the park to meet us there. So my little sister and I decided to go back home ourselves since it was a short walk. We were walking our usual route, and the backyard of other homes are very visible to us. And so is ours, but it's a little further away from the playground, and we are the only people who have a big, tall white fence, so you can't see over our yard. We walk closer. But before we could get that far, I suddenly feel the instinct to look at something. I stop walking our usual route and turn my head slightly to the right to see a tall, white figure. It's not human, nor anything I'd ever seen before. 
I tried hard to think of what it looked like, but that's when I realized it was coming towards my sister and I, maybe 20 feet away. Thinking I was a little crazy, I asked my sister if she could see it, and she pointed at it and said yes in fright. I think it's running at us, I exclaim. So we ran back to the court where my cousins and boyfriend were, and we ran as fast as we could as I was very afraid. The creature was tall, white, stick-like, maybe ten feet tall, and waving in a weird way. It was really fast, and I thought it might be a deer because I've seen one there before, but it was way too tall and strange looking, like an object and not a human figure. We just wonder if anyone has ever seen anything similar. My parents and others don't believe it, and doubt everything we really saw, but I know we did and would love to know if anyone has seen it too. One night, me and my two friends were walking around in the fields of a small town in Michigan. Our destination was a junkyard tucked away behind several fields, home to rusted out cars, semi-trailers and farm equipment. We were cutting through the fields to avoid the trigger-happy farmers that lived around there. Just about there, we were foiled by a stream too wide to leap. It was late autumn and wet feet would be uncomfortable, so we backed into the adjacent field. From our corner of the field, there was a tree line that ran east to west, and southward, the land rose into a large hill. We stood for a moment, discussing our options, when my eyes were drawn to a large white boulder, seeming to glow in the moonlight. It was around 75 yards away, and I was idly staring at it when it moved. It unfolded standing up at 10 to 12 feet, being skeletal thin, pure white with long limbs. For the space of a second it looked at us, and then it took off. I think it was running, but it may have been gliding or flying, honestly I'm unsure. It crossed the field up over the hill, a distance of probably a hundred yards in two to three seconds in complete silence, and was gone. Only two of the three of us saw it, and after a few minutes of incoherent gibbering, we tried to rationalize, explain, and figure out what the hell it was we saw, and decided it must be an alien. A year later I was at a party, and the subject of aliens came up and I say, I've seen an alien, and they say, yeah, let me guess, in Saranac, right? I confirmed, and we exchanged mutual looks of awe and he directed me to this fellow, Eric, who grew up in said town. He tells me he's seen strange things his whole life, like lights in the sky, but no humanoid beings. Fast forward another year and a half or so, and I get a phone call from an acquaintance who was sitting at work when he noticed a girl staring at him strangely. She eventually walks up to him and says, I feel like I need to talk to you. She proceeds to tell him that her friend's dad is the head of a vampire clan in a town near Saranac. My friend remembers my story about weird things in that area and asks if she knows anything about Saranac. She gets very defensive and eventually reveals that Saranac is a breeding ground for dragons. Yeah. To this day I'm not certain if I saw a dragon, alien or vampire, but I did poke around a little and I heard from a girl that lived there as a kid and that she had seen a random 15 foot scorch mark on the roadside in the middle of fields. Any illumination would of course be appreciated. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening and an extra thank you to all my amazing members and patrons whose names can be seen on screen. If you would like to receive some cool bonus prizes and perks etc, you can find the links in the description. If you want to watch even more stuff, follow the links on screen now, but until next time, stay awesome and I'll see you in the next one.